the day has finally arrived. A day that I never thought was even a remote possibility. From the gaming heavens, a Ninja Turtles game has descended. That might actually be better than Turtles in Time. I'm not quite prepared to say that just yet as a fact, but if Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge is not better than Turtles in Times, it's right there next to it. I understand that might be a very bold statement, but it's true. It's good. It's very good. Shredder's Revenge is a breath of fresh air in a climate where it feels like there's a modern day retro beat em up revival happening. We've seen recent success with games like Streets of Rage 4, Final Fight, Where Are You? Recent attempts at Ninja Turtles beat-em-ups have been, eh, meh at best. We had Mutants in Manhattan, which was okay, but before that, we had things like that weird Out of the Shadows game that had nothing to do with the movie, by the way, that they tried to make really dark and gritty, and honestly, I thought it was just boring. And remember that Ubisoft made Turtles in Time remake that reskinned the game with generic 3D graphics? It just ended up being this completely soulless copy of the original. Shredder's Revenge is the polar opposite of all of these. Going back to that magical 90s arcade era, the game pops, it's bright, it's, it's loud, it's very colorful. It's not trying to be dark and edgy, it's the 80s Ninja Turtles cartoon unapologetically. In fact, it's totally based off the cartoon, complete with the original Turtles voice actors returning for the sound bites. .emu and Tribute Games perfectly replicated the look and feel of my childhood Ninja Turtles, while giving us something fresh, new, and modern at the same time. Even some of the stages are callbacks to old school ones while being completely new. Like in Turtles in Time, you've got Big Apple, 3 a.m. And in Shredder's Revenge, you get to experience Big Apple, 3 p.m. There's some clever humor in that alone, I really enjoyed that. Story-wise, it's what you would expect out of a classic Turtles games. Shredder and his forces are once again messing with the Statue of Liberty. I don't know what beef they have with the Statue of Liberty, but they're at it again. And throughout the game, his baddies are collecting the pieces of Krang's robot suit and rebuilding him. And I'm not one to usually focus on graphics, but they're so important to the overall look and feel of this game that they have to be talked about. The graphics are this beautiful, crisp pixel art. It's bleeding with personality, and there's always something going on in the background, something to look at. Sure, it can be a bit distracting when you're surrounded by loads of enemies, but it's so fun to see all the little things going on, like in the mall level, you can catch foot soldiers in the background working in the food court. In another level, you can catch Slash poking his face out in the background and watching the turtles as they progress through the level, and then he appears as the boss at the end of the stage. Little things like this show the care and attention to detail in every aspect of the game's design. And while Shredder's Revenge can look and sound as beautiful as possible, if the gameplay sucks, then you have a problem. Thankfully, that problem is not here. The gameplay is totally solid. If you've played Turtles in Time, you know what to expect here. You jump, you hit, there's a special ninja attack button, which is your special, that has its own meter that fills up. However, they did add an extra layer, an upgrade system that allows you to level up each character. Every enemy you kill is one point, and there's several bonus points you can achieve by accomplishing challenges and bonus objectives. Your points are automatically saved to each individual character as you play through the game and you level up. That's the four turtles, Splinter and April, and Casey Jones, who to my surprise was not available right away. I was kind of disappointed at the beginning, but it gives you a reason to keep playing. Casey's unlocked after you beat story mode once. Not paid DLC, not added on content, you just have to play the game to unlock them. And as your character progresses, they earn upgrades such as earning an extra health point, extra lives, extra special attack meters, and it is needed. Arguably, I did play on the hardest difficulty, and that did present quite a challenge in some levels. At first, by the third or fourth level, I was getting destroyed by some of the bosses. But replaying levels and scoring more points to upgrade my character made it all pay off. It was a short grind that doesn't feel grindy. Victory felt earned. By the end of the game, if you've passed 2,000 points, you've maxed out your character and things get much easier. Since you can press R1, yes I did spam it constantly by the end. You press R1 to fill up the ninja attack meter, then when you have 3 ninja attack meters, which is your maximum, you can unlock a stronger attack. By the end, you are mighty, but again, it feels like you've earned it. It never feels like you're cheating. And the bosses are really fun to fight, too. Instead of just mashing the attack button until they're down, some of them require genuine strategy that takes a couple tries to beat. For example, when you fight Groundchuck in Dirtbag, it's best to let Groundchuck charge around the area, avoiding his attacks. And if you do this, he accidentally brings down Dirtbag's health quite a bit. He does most of the work for you, then you can turn your attention to finishing Dirtbag. If you just go in there and start attacking them like I did at first, you're gonna get wrecked. You have to really watch what the bosses do and then figure out a strategy around that. 
And there's plenty of bad guys from Ninja Turtles lore, like Rat King, Metalhead, of course, Krang and Shredder. There's a lot more. I won't spoil it all here. And I won't spoil the final two bosses at all, but they are awesome. There's even a nice variety of enemies when it comes to the small fry. Ninja Turtles games always had different color foot soldiers with different weapons. It's always been a thing. This time they require different tactics, like the white ones with the swords, for example. They can block now, so you want to strike them only when they're vulnerable, or else you're going to risk them blocking your attacks and then countering you. And the game adjusts its difficulty based on how many players you have, so don't think that you're going to invite five of your friends and it's going to make the game suddenly easy. Having more players means more enemies are generated on screen. The challenge of the game is fair, and if you find it too hard, you always have the option to turn the difficulty down. Truly a game for everybody. You start off each level with a refreshed amount of lives maxed out depending on your stats, and if you get a game over, you can retry the stage as many times as you need while you grind away at more points and more upgrades. Shredder's Revenge is also loaded with cameos that aren't just little easter eggs. Once you find bonus characters like Vernon, they become available on the world map, and they give you these little sub-quests, like finding all the hidden VHS tapes, or the punk frogs wanting you to find a certain number of bugs. All of this comes naturally just by playing the game and accomplishing the goals gives you more upgrade points. And of course, trophies and achievements. I would like to specify though that the upgrade system and world map are aspects of the game specific to story mode. The game also has arcade mode, which is exactly as it sounds. No upgrades, no unlimited continues, no special extras. It's just the levels and old school arcade difficulty, a genuine challenge from start to finish. You run out of quarters, you run out of quarters. And the soundtrack, the soundtrack, I can't say enough about it. It's so good, I'm gonna get the vinyl, just listen to some of this. It makes me think of the old school Ninja Turtles movies and that late 90s, early 2000s skating rink music. If you know, you know. If it's not obvious already, I highly recommend the game. I can't think of anything I didn't like. There's not one thing I would have changed. If anything, I wanted more of it. There's a lot of substance to Shredder's Revenge and replayability. Upgrading every character requires you to jump back into story mode a couple times, and it encourages you to try everyone out. The first time around on the hardest difficulty, the game easily took four to five hours. And that included spending a couple levels getting game overs and trying them again a couple times. There's 16 stages total and you can play up to six people, both offline and online. Here's my final summary. If you like Ninja Turtles and or beat em up games, just buy this. There's no way in hell you'll regret it. It's outstanding. It's one of the best games released this year. Probably the best Ninja Turtles game of all time, and I'm gonna be playing it for a very long time to come. Check it out, and if you would like to check it out live tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern time, I will be streaming it. That's the review. My opinion has been heard. I'll see you guys later.